Welcome back to TGI Fridays. Ken Berthelot and Renee Nado. This is the Prep Recruiting Insider, and we're celebrating John Curtis Day. Our special guest is Coach J.T. Curtis, going for his 25th state championship in the 50th year of the school. And that right there, Coach J.T., says so much about the program you established when you started coaching 44 years ago. Mike yeah, Curtis. that was a long time ago, in 1969, and... Uh, a lot of people don't remember, but I do. We were 0-10, uh, scored two touchdowns, but we've come a long way since then, and, and it's been because of the, uh, the support of the administration and the kind of players and the parents that are involved in our program are, are really committed to it, and they're committed young men, and, and it allows them to be successful, uh, maybe beyond what uh, the norm would be. Because this team is so strong, and you've been asked many times this year to compare this team with all the other teams you've had, is it the best, is it the strongest? But because they have been winning so big, because they really haven't been challenged, has this been a special year for you? Well, Excuse me, I got choked up. <laughs> it's a good football team, there's no question about that. But, you know, the jury's going to be out on that until Saturday about 2.30 or so because the ultimate goal of any football team is to win a state championship, have an opportunity to compete for a state championship. I think this team will give what they have. They'll leave it on the field. They'll play as hard as they can play. Uh, certainly it's a talented team, but again, the, 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 the final measure hasn't been measured yet. Uh, I think the legend guest you have coming on had a pretty good football team in 1985, and uh, we've had some other really good football teams since then. But certainly this team has played extremely well, and uh, we'll know a little more about that question to be answered, uh, like I said, about 2.30 next Saturday. You know, JT, you don't have the success you have without uh, being able to push buttons and stuff. Every, every team is unique in its own way. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, 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 and uh, being able to, to win games, talking to the players, winning above the shoulder pads. So much is done on the field, X and O's. But, uh, you have a way, you don't have this much success without knowing how to push the buttons and, and know the personality of each team. Well, there's no doubt. And, and you know, I get the question all the time, but does it ever get old? Uh, does it ever get tiresome? Are you? And it doesn't. And the reason it doesn't is because every team is different. Every single team has their own personality. They have to find their own team chemistry. They have to develop their own team leadership. And, and that's what makes this thing so much fun and makes it so much and makes it so interesting. And, and you're really right, especially with a year like uh, this year where we've won some games by big scores. Uh, our guys have had to keep their head uh, uh, grounded on, on, and stay in focus on what the goals are. And, and I think our coaches that have, have done a great job with that. Our practices have been really intense. And, and, and I think we've, we've been able to maintain that level of focus that we need in order to be successful week in and week out. Well, JT, who is, I know you've been asked this so many times, and I know Kenny and I have asked you this, but who's a couple of coaches that have had an influence in your career? You know, Coach Boyles, when I was at Arkansas, was so far ahead of his time. He was a, a, a unique guy. He uh, was one of the first guys that had a second offensive line coach, as an example. A lot of people don't know Barry Switzer, who was the head coach at Oklahoma for a number of years, was the second offensive line coach at Arkansas. Uh, his preparation and his ability to get a team ready to play, uh, knowing how to, to know when to back off and when to press the team. I, I learned those things really not so much then, but as I grew in the coaching profession, realized how smart he really was. And he certainly was a big influence. And, and without any question, uh, Bob Whitman, who just recently passed away, uh, was my head coach at East Jefferson High School. And, uh, was a tremendous influence in my life in, in terms of not only about being a football coach, but about being a man, because he was as fine a Christian man and as fine a family man as I've ever known. Before we talk about the game with Evangel, have you ever sat back and just relaxed a little bit and, and thought back and said, wow, years ago when my dad started this school, this was the legacy he wanted to leave. This is the legacy he left, and now I'm here carrying it on with maybe a, a quarter of a century of state championships and a half century of the school's existence thriving like he would have dreamed it to thrive when he founded it. Well, you know, his goal was never to, to be a state champion. His goal had always been, and, and still is today with our school, to keep kids involved. I, it doesn't make any difference to us if it's the band or the dance team or the key club or the yearbook staff. We want kids to be involved. Extracurricular activities, teamwork, learning how to get along with other people, setting goals outside of just yourself. And so 
he was always one that wanted us to be the very best we could be at whatever we did. And it wasn't an easy thing to do, especially early on. But I know he's extremely proud. Uh, he loved going to those games and he loved competing. And when we competed and played as hard as we could, he was always proud. And, and when we lost, he would always say, remember, the sun's coming up tomorrow. It'll be a new day. God will have a new way for you. Just stay focused and things will be okay. And, and I really appreciated that and have learned to appreciate it more with time. You know, Coach, with, with so much going on in high school now and, and kids, they always want to show me. It's going to be a me. If somebody scores a touchdown, it's a, a rip open a shirt and things like that. But you've had 13 guys go to the NFL. You've had success in all sports, baseball and basketball and track. You've never seen a, a me kind of attitude. Uh, it, it's never been any showboating. I know it's the school and things like that. You have guys here that uh, a lot of recruits that's going to be going to the next level. Uh, it's sometimes it's tough to keep a, a superior athlete from, uh, you know, buying into a situation with just team only. Well, you know what? Those kind of guys really don't fit into our program. They really are not. They're going to learn that it's not about them. It's about us. And, and, and one of the things that I really strive to do that I think is important is I treat every player exactly the same. Whether you're the first team player or the fourth team player is not relevant to me. We go on a trip, we're all going together. I brought 100 guys to West, uh, North Webster, wow. which is a half a mile off the Arkansas border. But those guys had been with us, they had gone through spring ball, they had gone through the summer workouts, they had done the things they were supposed to do. So we loaded them all up, we took them all. And I think that's so important for the team concept and gets away from that I stuff and more to the we that I think is what makes teams successful. And if a kid really wants to play, you don't cut him, you give him the chance. Uh, he's right? going to have a shot to play. We're going to coach him every single day that he's out there. Well, let's talk about Evangel because you've got a big one coming up and, and probably two of the, as we've talked about, better teams in the state of Louisiana, maybe two of better teams in high school football, period. Um, just your initial thoughts, uh, your, your comments. Well, on, two on things. Game. I think first, they, their quarterback's a three-year starter. He's a Duron. So he, Durand, comes yeah. from a, he comes from a great line of quarterbacks and great uh, football family. family. Absolutely. Uh, they're a team that is wide open. They haven't changed a bit. They're going to get in four and five wides, and they're going to throw the ball down the field. They're going to run it when it's advantageous to them. Uh, they are a run and shoot kind of guy, and uh, Barb, who's going to play Rumble for the state championship, they lost to uh, by the two point conversion at the very, very end of the game. So uh, they're a good football team. Oh, my goodness. Now, it's a birthday. We have two birthdays, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, God. Tomorrow, Coach JT Curtis and Renee Nado <laughs> both celebrate their birthday. And the lovely wait staff here at TGI Fridays wants to make sure they enjoy it. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Fantastic. Thank you very much. I'm not giving any ages away. I, I wish those two candles were indicative of the age. <laughs> <laughs> but back, back to Evangel. They're a, a typical Evangel team. I mean, they're, they're going to throw the football and they're going to play solid defense and, and uh, uh, they're going to be, uh, it's going to be a heck of a football game. Renee? I'm speechless. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's good. I, I, I could have taken this over, but I didn't know whether he was listening or not just looking at the brownies. So. <laughs> it's good. I'm looking forward to it, JT, and I know you, you're no stranger to Evangel. Uh, Denny Duran has done a great job over there, and, and it's going to be interesting to see that uh, you're all going to be tested, your defense is going to be tested, no and it's going to be interesting uh, to see how the whole thing turns out. But it's going to be an interesting game from a fan perspective. Uh, there'll be, uh, it'll, it'll be some tense moments, I'm sure. It will, and it'll be very entertaining. But, you know, very quickly, I just think this is going to be a tremendous Superdome Classic. I mean, when you're talking about Barb, you're talking about Rummel, you're talking about Carr, you're talking about those kind of teams that are going to compete for a state championship. I think it's going to be a fabulous week of high school football. Best of luck to you. We hope you get the 25th in the 50th year of the school. You're a class person. Thank you. You, you've built some wonderful and, and developed some some classy men through the years. Thank you for everything you've done. We're going to uh, hear from some of the players who are going to play in this game and let you go enjoy that brownie. But Renee can't enjoy his, so <laughs> just leave him still again. Yeah, Coach yeah. JT Curtis, we'll take a break and be back with a couple of the Curtis players right after this on the Prep Recruiting Insider from TGI Fridays right here on Veterans across from the Lakeside Mall in Bellevue.
Welcome back to the Prep Recruiting Insider at TGI Fridays, where it's always Friday, right here, 3330 Veterans, right by Causeway in Metairie. And our guest on this segment of the show are Curtis Players, offensive lineman, 6'4", 280 pound uh, offensive lineman, Brandon Godfrey, and running back Tevin Harden, 5'9", 203, and uh, faster than a lightning bolt. And it's our pleasure to have them as our guest uh, with Renee Nato on this edition of the Prep Recruiting Insider. And uh, Brandon, let's start with you. Sir. Big game coming up. And before you talk about Evangel, just talk about this year. It's really been a special year with this team, hasn't it? And yes, sir. How special to you as a senior? It, it's really special because as a, as a freshman, you just talk and you're like, I want to be great when I'm a senior and I want to be, be above and beyond what you are. And then to know that you've really have exceeded all those expectations. It was really special. And Tevin, as a senior running back, what good memories and, and what has this year meant to you? Well, this year has meant a lot to me with, um, with all the guys that we have graduating. It's just a great class and a great, just a great family thing that we have together as a team, a great bond, a great chemistry. And um, just being able to get recognized like we are is just a great blessing to us as a team. And we all just take it in day to day, just waking up, just want to take it, take it all out on the field every day. You know, Tevin, we've had a chance to watch you up close, and, and you're a guy that has good speed, about 4 4 5 40, good burst. You're heading to UL Monroe. Uh, how tough it was a decision to decide you want to go to Mohawk? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't really tough, you know. It was a school that I wanted to be at, and it's not, it's not too far away from home, and it's not, you know, very close, but it's just a great thing that I like to do and I like to be at. Coach Applewhite, the recruiting coordinator that recruited me, he's a good man, and I just felt that I felt real secure and real safe being a young little fan early. There goes Kevin Horton, number five. Now, what, uh, what do you feel like is your strengths and, and, uh, as a running back? My strengths as a running back would be my, my, uh, my sharpness on the field, being able to feel, feel, having a great feel for the game, my, my, power, my power and my speed, and being able to get through the, through the smallest holes that I could possibly be and this guy to your left has a lot to do with a lot of your runs. Brandon, yes, sir. I, I'm, I'm excited because, you know, it looks like a great fit for you at Tulane. You've had a chance to play some tackle. That's got to help you uh, being, you know, versatile enough to play guard, tackle, or center. And it looks like you're going to play center at Tulane. Why Tulane? I'm sure, I know your brother went there, but why sir. Tulane? Why is it a good fit for you? It was just when I, when I went and visited there and talked with the coaches and all, I felt that's where, I, where they wanted me at. And I, ever since I was a little kid, I had a love for Tulane. And then once the offer came, it was just, it was just like chills down my back. And it was like, that's really where I have to go. And you see what Coach Curtis Johnson is doing at Tulane. That's got to get you excited, even though the number of wins weren't there this year. The offensive explosion was, you can see the team turning around. Uh, how big of a role did that play in your decision? Well, at first, everybody was like, why Tulane? Why, you know, I said, why not Tulane? Because even though they didn't produce yeah. on the field as well as, I, as well as people thought they were the first year, once Curtis Johnson gets his own recruits and all in there, it just, I think it's really going to be special. And it's interesting that Andrew Nearman came out of Curtis, went to Tulane as a center. Uh, Mike Henry as a center over at Tulane now came out of Curtis. So you got to kind of keep the tradition going as a former Curtis player lining up at center. Um, that offense, you've kind of had a chance to see that offense up close. How does it fit your skills and what makes you kind of excited going into the offense Curtis Johnson has now? Well, I like, to, in the beginning of the year, they wanted to pass the ball a little more, but I like that they're starting to run the ball more. And I feel that's my most effective position. I mean, my most effective asset that I have is run blocking. So I like the fact that we're run blocking more and then it's all based off of play action and stuff. So it's not the same offense Curtis runs, but it, it fits into how I play. Now, Tevin, is there a particular running back that you've kind of tried to model your style after that you feel, uh, you know, you've kind of maybe have a fat head on the wall or something, anybody you kind of like? Oh, yes, sir. I, I like Tim Richardson a lot, Adrian Peterson, and going way back to, like, the 80s and early 90s would be, like, Barry Sanders, Bo Jackson, those guys. And I really look up to those guys, and I really try to mimic what they do on the field. Now, how much you feel like the fact that John Curtis has opened things up more by passing, a good shot here at Patrick Horton throwing the ball. That's yes, helped sir. an awful lot because you guys are not just going to grind it out. They have to be mm -hmm. cognizant. Of, opponents have to be aware of the fact that you guys can throw it a little bit. 
Oh, yes, sir. We can throw, we've been able to throw the ball a lot this year, just having us spread the ball out of the field and having a secure run game as well. And just having a balanced offense this year, you know, with Malachi Dupree and Amante Brown and uh, Jordan, Jordan Martin, we've been able to get the ball down the field a lot in the passing game. And it's really opened, a lot, opened up the run game a lot for us as well, and being able to throw the ball. Now, Brandon, something that, that's impressed Ken and I, we haven't had a chance to see you in games, is as you get to the second level, you're not just a guy that's going to block your man. You're going to run downfield, and that's something that uh, is traditional with Curtis offensive linemen, that you just have to get your block and go downfield and block somebody else. Yes, sir. That's when when a bunch of coaches were recruiting me and stuff, that's, they said that's probably the best thing I do is block at the second level. And, it, and that's why when we just combo block and get to the second level, that's why Tevin, Sherman, all the other guys are able to break it because they go one-on-one -on -one into safety. If we get the linebackers block, it gives them to do, it, to do what they're capable of doing in the, in the uh, backfield. The Banjo game coming up this week, and of course this is the state championship game. It's the clash of the two Titans. And uh, what do you guys have to do to win this game? Uh, start with Brandon. We, we just have to play physical. We have to play physical and grind it out. We, we have to run them. We have to be very effective running the ball and just be ready for whatever defense their coach their coach has lined up for us. Kevin, we just have to stick to uh, stick to the game plan and what we've been practicing all week. All week we practice hard and coming out again. This is this is going to be one of the biggest games that of our of our lives. Being able to play in a state championship our senior year, just got to go out hard and physical because those guys they're going to do the same thing. Renee? Well, I tell you what, it's interesting to see both of you guys have, have been a part of this tradition at John Curtis and 25 state championships and you guys have a chance to be a part of that right now. It's got to be special. Congratulations. Good luck against the Avenger this week. And, and I know it's going to be a special, special weekend for both of you guys. And y'all realize it's Coach Curtis's birthday. Anything special that you guys are going to do for him for his birthday? Uh, uh, we haven't planned on it yet, but it's going to be something it's something that just comes up is going to be epic. It's going to be epic. I can well, I'm that. glad you didn't tell anybody. So whatever it is, <laughs> keep that secret. Okay, that's the yes, key. Sir. Brandon Godfrey, offensive lineman, Kevin Horton, running back, John Curtis. Thank you very much for being with us on the show. We'll be right back in just a moment. And our guest will be Malachi Dupree and Richard Allen. Right after this on the Prep Recruiting Insider from TGI Fridays, where it's always Fridays with great food right here on Veterans in Metal. Welcome back to the Prep Recruiting Insider at TGI Fridays, right here on Veterans in Metairie across from the Lakeside Mall. Renee and I's guest on this segment of the show from John Curtis is wide receiver Malachi Dupree, along with uh, cornerback Richard Allen. And let's start off with Malachi, uh, and I'll ask you first, this team, this Curtis team, has just rolled over its competition. Many people are saying, They've never seen a team do this much in every single game. What is it about this team that's made it a very special team as a team and for you personally this year, Malachi? Well, um, I mean, we have talent at every position, and, um, and each, each position has, has a great depth. And, um, I mean, I think the competition isn't prepared in all aspects of the game like us, and our coaches just prepare us um, great, and, uh, and it's just, it just helps us in the games. Richard, same question for you, and this is Richard Allen, uh, cornerback. You can go out and make a great defensive play, and, and on the next three series, somebody's making just the same kind of great defensive play. The talent's that deep. What's so special about this team? I think what's special about this team is losing to Evangel uh, my freshman and sophomore year. Because when I came in, I'm thinking like the state championships are guaranteed at John Curtis. When we lost <laughs> those two years, we realized that we really had to work hard. So coming into our junior year, we really set the tempo for this year and the next few years that you need to come out here and work hard at practice and get after it every single day. So that really helped out, helped us out last year, and that's, going to, and that's really helping us out this year again. So that's really what helped us out. One thing about Richard that has impressed me is he's got a 4.0 GPA. Uh, he was recognized in the uh, in New Orleans Science Engineering Fair, if I'm correct. Uh, so you, you do it in, in, on the classroom and then the, uh, on the field as well. Uh, you, you have uh, five interceptions this year. You've taken numerous punt returns and kick returns for touchdowns. 
uh, and you decided to go to Tulane. What was it about Tulane that kind of grabbed your attention, Richard? And by the way, Richard is number 23 on this video. Uh, Tulane is one well, of the coaches when I went to that camp. They really talked to me and they were really cool and I really got, like we had good chemistry with each other and I really felt like I was at home when I was talking to the coaches. And I, I really wanted to stay close to home so my parents would be able to come see me. So that's really what helped me in make my decision to go to Tulane. What, what other schools did you consider? Uh, I was considering going to a school in California, uh, Stanford. and. That's probably one of the other only schools I really considered going to. And we saw that he'll probably be returning punts there too. Oh, he does a great job. And Malachi, you know, people have, have, uh, have told me that uh, you may be one of the best, if not the best, dual sport athletes to ever come out of John Curtis. Uh, you've won state championships in track, in basketball, and now have an opportunity to win one in football again. Um, it's crazy. 42 inch vertical, six foot, eight, eight, uh, six feet, eight inch high jump. Uh, and, and you excel on a basketball court, can shoot the threes. What are you looking for in a school? Only a junior. What are you looking for in a school that when you decide to pull the trigger and make a commitment? What, what, uh, what, school you, what kind of school are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for a school that can fit me best on and off the football field. Um, one, I can, I can bond with my coaches and have a good chemistry with them. Um, I have a good academic program where I can get my master's after I finish my undergraduate so I can continue um, with my career. Um, I mean, it's just, it's just right now I'm taking it real slow. I don't, I don't really know where I want to go yet. And by the way, um, Malachi is number 15 as a wide receiver here. Uh -huh. Keep going, Malachi. Um, but uh, just taking it right now real slow and just trying to help every team that I participate in, whether it's football, track, or basketball, or just helping them win a uh, state championship. And um, that's my goal. Now, what school? What's some of the schools that, that have, uh, you know, been talking to you about uh, about next year? Um. Well, right now it's uh, LSU, Ole Miss, Florida State, Colorado, UCLA. Um, Cincinnati, USC, Tennessee, Florida. This is a bunch of schools, and um, I mean, I'm just taking it real slow, and I'm appreciating, appreciating everything, and I'm blessed to have this opportunity. And um, I just thank everybody, and I'm just keep working hard. But right now, I'm focusing on getting the state championship this Saturday, and I'm um, helping my team get a victory. Now, since you can shoot the threes for Mike Kreitz's basketball team, is basketball a consideration playing both sports in college? Um, it is. I mean, a lot of schools are coming after me to play uh, football and basketball in college, and some play uh, football and track in college. Right now, um, I really don't know what I'm going to do yet. It's just hard, and uh, take process slow, and I'm just thankful. But, um, I mean, it's a possibility. Richard, when you watch Malachi play basketball, we know he can play football. We've seen the highlight, but when you watch him play basketball, have you ever seen somebody at that level as a junior play above the rim as much as he can play it? No, it's shocking. I mean, he jumped so high and nobody could jump with him. Like, it was really fun and exciting to actually watch him play basketball. And he could dunk, and <laughs> it was really nice watching him play basketball at the school. Let's talk a little bit about Evangel, right? Y your thoughts on Evangel coming in. What's very key for uh, Curtis to do to get the victory in this game on Saturday? For the defensive side, it's hustling to the ball and tackling. I think we're really getting in tune with the offense and knowing what our keys are and what to pay attention to, and we really learn the offense. So as of this point, we're going to continue focusing more and get as much as we can information on them. And when the ball is in the air, we need to get after it. And if they run the ball, we need to make sure we tackle. And we can't have missed tackles because that's going to kill us. So. Now, look, I, from an offensive standpoint, right. keys well, to win. Um, well, I just know we, we, we want to have a, a good pace trying to tie the defense. They're really good athletes. We just want to make sure we control, control the game and not let the uh, Evangel control us. Um, we just keep working hard on uh, and executing the plays that the coaches have in store for this weekend. But um, I mean, just, just execute the game plan that the coaches have for us. I know it's going to be a great game plan. And if we just do, do that, I know we can get the victory. Now, Richard, you already have about three or four teammates that are going with you yes, sir. to Tulane. That's got to be special and, and, and talk how that's going to be kind of a little family thing. Yeah, that's great. We can all room together because four people to a room. And we're going to have all our families come into the game. That's going to bring more of a fan base towards the school. And I'm going to have people that already know that. So it's going to be real fun. And it will be easier talking to other people when we're in a group instead of just going out to a new place all by yourself and then trying to go and talk to other people. So going to that as a group, that's, I'm really looking forward to it. 
Now you're looking at five interceptions right here, 15 touchdowns sitting next to him and 809 yards with all of that. And, and I'm going to ask you the same two questions we asked to the other guys. You know it's Coach Curtis's birthday tomorrow. Anything special you're going to give him for a birthday present? Um, Hopefully we give him that state championship yes, as a birthday present. So, that would be a pretty nice one, huh, Renee? That 25th state championship, 50-year anniversary. That's going to be real nice. That would be good. Richard Allen, Malachi Dupree, yeah. thank you very, very much for being a guest to Renee with today and I on this edition of the Prep Recruiting Insider. Thanks a lot, guys. Good yes, luck sir. against Evangel thank on you. Saturday. Okay? Thanks. Thanks. All right, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we want to thank all of the Curtis players. We want to thank Coach J.T. Curtis. And when we come back, we'll have our player and coach of the week right after this on the Prep Recruiting Insider from TGI Fridays in Meadows. Welcome back to the Prep Recruiting Insider. It's time for our Max Home New Bath Player and Coach of the Week. And Renee and I had to not think too hard on this one. These were pretty easy selections. Our Max Home New Bath Player of the Week belongs to the John Curtis Patriots. And he is linebacker Duke Riley, the senior linebacker. And look what he did. Wow. 15 stops, a fumble recovery. He's been the ringleader of that team. He's uncommitted at this point, but what a great player he has been. Linebacker has the skills to drop in the pass coverage, and uh, he's done it all year long. Senior Duke Riley for the John Curtis Patriots. And we teased about this on some of the games we did on our prep football coverage, but we said if you want to find number 40, you want to find Duke Riley, you just look for the football, and he'll be around it somewhere because he's that kind of heady player. Congratulations, Duke Riley, our Max Home New Bath Player of the Week. And our Coach of the Week, is Edna Carr's Jabbar Jaluk, and what a fabulous job he did beating Holy Cross last week. Big win against Holy Cross, and it was a challenge for the Tigers, really challenged uh, Edna Carr, but Jabbar Jaluk has done a great job. Uh, he's been to the Supernova four or three times, and he wants to go back, and, and hopefully this will be the charm this year for the Cougars. They want to come home with their championship game. It'll be against the Neville team that is really, really talented. What a game it's going to be, Carr and Neville this coming week. But Jabbar Jaluk, for the season and he's had is a coach of the week. Goodness, Renee, when you beat the uh, Holy Cross and St. Aug on back-to-back -back weeks, <laughs> I think you've earned a state championship. He's got to play three state championship games in a row. Really, and he's done a great job, and yeah. he's got a solid program. He's uh, consistent. He wins week in, week out. Uh, he's got the team's his opponent's best shot each week, but he finds a way to win, and Jabbar Jaluk, congratulations. And by the way, Jabbar Jaluk and some of the car players will be our guests next week on the Prep Recruiting Insider. Our Max Home New Bath player of the week. Frank Amos, marketing director of Max Home New Bath, is normally with us. He is out of town because things are going very well right now for Max Home New Bath. He'll be back with us next week. In the meantime, let us tell you a little bit about this with Christmas coming up. Here's the time. If you're a parent and you're watching this high school show, you've got an elderly parent moving in with you or maybe moving out somewhere, you want to take a look at the New Bath Max Home website. Think about getting them the bath of a lifetime. And the bath is, or the website is, www.newbathnow.com. And by the way, when you go to that website, take a look at the upper right corner. You can click up there to register to win the $25,000 home makeover. Now, Renee's registered 10 times already, so I know he's gone for it. And uh, Max Home New Bath. By the way, also, folks, don't forget that they have a lot of new products. And you can not only pick them up at Home Depot, but you can read more about them on the website. So please, Max Home, New Bath, uh, Larry Kloss, Frank Amos, the Director of Marketing, wonderful people. They're local for the last four years in a row. They've been one of the top 10 fastest growing companies in the New Orleans area. They're local, they care about you. Visit them at Max Home and New Bath. We'll be back with our legend. He is former John Curtis and Notre Dame football star, Mike Stonebreaker, all of that coming up in just a moment on the Prep Recruiting Insider.
Welcome back to the Prep Recruiting Insider from TGI Fridays, where it's always Friday and where the food is always fabulous. We are here on Veterans, 3330 Veterans, across from the Lakeside Mall in Metairie. And our legend on John Curtis Day is a gentleman who won three state championships at John Curtis, one national championship at Notre Dame. He got it all with the partridge in the pear tree, played for the National Football League with the Chicago Bears, with the New Orleans Saints. He is Michael Stonebreaker. Michael, thanks for being with us on this show. And it has to be a special day for you to listen to these young men at Curtis talk about continuing a tradition and legacy that you were a part of back in the early 1980s. It is. It's really good to see JT and see these young kids. I was asking them about you know, how Leon Curtis is, how Coach Robinson is. You know, those guys are still around. And they're still teaching, you know, the basic things of, of fundamental football is what they teach at John Curtis. That's why JT and his guys are able to uh, continue to win the amount of games they win. JT's, you know, hopefully going to be up in the 519 wins. And, you know, what they do is they teach fundamentally sound football when that's all you know. When you're tired in the third quarter or fourth quarter, you can't make mistakes because you don't know how to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, you know, it's really good to see them uh, and, and, and know the excitement that they're feeling right now, knowing they're playing for a national championship on Saturday. Uh, it's a pretty good feeling. You know, you won, as, as Kenny said, Michael, you won three state titles. Uh, you were the defensive MVP in the district twice, the Metro MVP, and Louisiana and state de uh, defensive MVP. That would that'd be great. But, you know, the, the, what you learned at John Curtis before you went on to Notre Dame, uh, the foundation of players you play with, it, 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 it sets you in the right direction before you got to college. Yeah, it definitely does. You know, the, the, the teachers there, they're, they're all family. You're, you feel comfortable when you go there. You know, there, there's a good base to, to their teachings, how they feel, how they interact with the kids, how they interact with the students, how they interact with the student athletes. Um, you know, it's a comforting school and, and it's a place where you can blossom and grow and achieve whatever you want to achieve. You explained how JT Curtis helped you with the fundamentals of football. How did, it, how did he help you with the fundamentals of life, becoming a man, becoming a better person, which allowed you to be the player you went on to be at Notre Dame and in the National Football League? Well, that's what it is. You know, it's, it's, it's their whole principle of, of, you know, their teachings and striving for excellence and understanding that you're sacrificing for a common goal. You know, you get a group of people together who are sacrificing for a common goal. It, um, it, it, it bonds you as a group. And so at, at that point, you're able to focus and achieve whatever goals you want to achieve. And going to Notre Dame, uh, as, a, as, as a freshman, I was able to break the starting lineup as a freshman. Actually, the, the first game I started as a freshman was at home in Tiger Stadium against LSU, right? And so, you know, that's a pretty nerve-wracking thing. And, uh, and uh, the three amigos right there yep. in the 88 uh, National Championship team. And so, the uh, bone-crushing you know, linebacker, I think they called you back then, right? A couple of plays. <laughs> you know, the thing, Michael, that, uh, you know, we can talk about the recruiting process, but I remember you had a great game against Michigan in the 1988 season, 16 tackles and a 19 17 win, and you were recognized as the national defensive player of the week in that particular game. Uh, what do you remember about that particular game in the 88 season? And this uh, is the that, Fiesta Bowl right here while you talk about that national championship. That was the first game of the year yes. uh, in 88 against Michigan. I actually had 20 tackles. Okay, uh, sorry. I, I, I don't know where the 16 <laughs> came from. Um, you know, that was a big game. It was a night game. They had the lights on. They brought in the lights for uh, 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 Notre Dame Stadium. And it was just an electrifying feeling. You know, I remember um, um, being out there, the fans, you know, Notre Dame, Michigan is really big. And, uh, and uh, so to be a part of that game, we had Reggie Hill kick, I think, five field goals that day, and, and we were able to squeak out a win. Um, you know, but that was the start of that 88 National Championship season, so, you know, it was pretty exciting. Yeah, you know, with Manti Teo coming up with the Heisman Trophy candidate this coming weekend, you played with the last Heisman Trophy winner at Notre Dame, Tim Brown, in 1987. What do you recall about that Heisman hype with Tim Brown? Uh, it was big. Uh, Tim was an, is an unbelievable person and was an unbelievable football player. Matter of fact, that first game I started uh, against the LSU, I think Tim ran two touchdown kickoffs back for touchdowns. I think they called the second one uh, back on a penalty. Uh, we would have won that game, um, but the, the, the Tigers were able to uh, uh, get the win. 
Tim's a great guy, exceptional guy, you know, on the field, off the field, just a class person, you know, his athletic skills were unbelievable. Um, and we knew that every time he uh, had his hands on a ball that, that he could break it for a touchdown. Now, why should Manti Teo, if you look at the camera, why should Manti Teo win the Heisman Trophy this Saturday? Because um, no defensive player has ever won it. Because no defensive player has ever won it. There he is, making a tackle for a two-yard gain. Um, to be a part of Notre Dame and, and to have the expectations that are put on them, and to come from an unranked uh, uh, a team at the beginning of the season to, to, to the number one team in the country playing for the national championship. Um, it's done by having a strong defense, having strong defensive leaders, uh, making big plays, and uh, you know, getting lucky on, on a couple plays also. That's what it takes to get there. And so, you know, he's consistently um, made the plays, made the tackles. I think towards the end of the season, they kind of were running away from his tackle totals, uh, uh, weren't that many per game, but that's because offenses had to scheme around him and, and try to get their yardage in other areas. And you think he'd stand a, a better chance because Johnny Manziel from Texas A&M is only a freshman. You'd think they'd give it to the upperclassmen, but they probably won't vote for the defensive guy, will they? Uh, probably not. You know, it's an offensive league and uh, uh, it's uh, offense scores points. Offense is real fancy, but you know, where the real work is done is in between the tackles and, and making those plays and, and controlling the other team's offense. Which when is, when is, you watch Teo play and, and, and you were in the running for the Heisman, you were in the running for the Butkus. He won the Butkus that was announced on Monday. Uh, do you see a little bit of you in him or a little bit of him in you? Uh, no, I just, when, you know, when I'm watching him play, you, you kind of get lost putting your mind back in, back in, back in when you played and all that. So. You know, I'd like to run out there and, and make a couple more tackles. Uh, uh, I might get arrested if I do that. Mike, Michael, you have had a, a, had a chance to have a great uh, business right now, No Brew Coffee, and, and it's been a successful venture. Uh, you uh, doing well. And tell us a little bit about the No Brew uh, Coffee situation. Uh, no Brew, N.O. Brew is cold drip coffee that we um, bottle and we sell in grocery stores. It's sold in all the local grocery stores. We're available in the Whole Foods throughout the um, country. And it's um, probably the most delicious tasting cup of coffee you'll ever have. It's a natural coffee. It's right? a nat all natural uh, products. Um, when when you cold drip the coffee, it leaves seventy percent of the bitter acids in the bean, so it makes for a much smoother tasting cup of coffee. So people with sensitive stomachs are, are you know, you have the no brew and 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 you don't get. And Renee, he's grown this company from right here in New Orleans to a nationwide company. And you know, a little while ago I asked you, how did JT Curtis help prepare you for life? And you talked about self-sacrifice, working for the team. Those are the, it seems those are the kind of things that would have played a big role in you growing this company into the successful company that it has become today. Definitely, when you, know, when you have setbacks and when you have goals that are reached or aren't reached, um, you always have to keep forging forward and you know, getting over the hurdles and continuing to grow and you know when it's when it's 95 degrees out and people are complaining about how hot it is in New Orleans or this I'm you know I always think back to well it's you know at least it's not day three of mini camp when you're laying in full pads and, and you, you know you've got another two weeks of, of, of training camp ahead of you it makes life a lot easier. You didn't get about 40, 45 seconds left but you had time to play on the same team with, with uh, Mike Singletary and Sam Mills as a middle linebacker during your NFL career. Any similarities between those two guys? Um, yeah, I, was, I, was, I backed up Mike in Chicago and, and Sam here in New Orleans. And you know, the good thing is I was able to learn from them. Uh, they were both high character guys, you know, both quality individuals. And um, uh, you know, they played the game the way it was supposed to be played in between the tackles. Both of them, along with myself, you know, not the, not the tallest, most physical uh, uh, outline of a linebacker you, you would choose, but in between the tackles, you know, those guys, they made tackles and, and they were aggressive and they dominated everybody in between the tackles. Mike Stonebreaker, never enough time. Thank you very much for being our guest as our legend from John Curtis, Notre Dame, and the NFL on Prep Recruiting Insider. Thank you, guys. It was a lot of fun. Everybody. We'll be back to wrap up this edition of the Prep Recruiting Insider from TGI Fridays here in Metairie right after this.
TGI Fridays, 3330 Veterans in Metairie, our gracious host. It's always Friday here at TGI Fridays, and hey, I got to tell you, wow, the food is fabulous. Come try it. You will love the food and the wait staff and all of the friendly people here at TGI Fridays. Don't forget to visit our Facebook page, uh, the Prep Recruiting Insider Facebook page. That guy on the left always has something interesting to say. Wow. He is a sharp cookie. <laughs> and uh, even though you are watching us today in the 5 o'clock hour, we are back at 6 o'clock next week because the telethon will be over. The biggest thing is we want to remind everybody there are some great games in the Louisiana Superdome. Friday night, uh, uh, classes 1 and 4, and then 2, 3, and 5 on Saturday. And, and folks, you've got to go to the Dome. This is going to be a great, great weekend of football. You know, and, and I tell you what, as far as, as NFL is concerned, every year the NFL uh, gets about 34, 35 from the New Orleans area, about 100 from the state of Louisiana. These are the stars of the future. Go out and see the games this oh, weekend. Oh, sportsnola.com. Read Renee's column this week, folks. Read Renee's column this week on all of the, uh, the, the college recruits that are going to come out of this weekend's Dome games. You will love it. That's going to wrap it up for this edition of the Prep Recruiting Insider for our fabulous crew that works with us every week. And Renee, uh, Andrew, Adam in the truck, I'm Ken Berthelot. This is the Prep Recruiting Insider on WHNO TV 20 Sports.